Welcome back to Investor Intel, everyone's favorite source for independent investing information. Today we're very fortunate to have with us Scott Moore, or G. Scott Moore as he's known professionally, from Eurosun Mining. Hi Scott. How you doing Peter? Doing well today and very pleased to be able to speak with you. I've been actually following your story for some time and it's wonderful to see some life being breathed into it. You're getting the attention you deserve. Yeah, I think finally, you know, certainly I would say that developers are the, the laggards in the group, but we're finally getting a, a little bit of a sunshine on the on, on the stocks, as, as it were. So your principal asset is in the country of Romania, and it's a gold and copper asset. Yeah, that's correct. We're running about uh, 7 million ounces of gold, about a billion and a half pounds of copper, so about 10 million ounces gold equivalent, and it's the Rovina Valley project uh, in Romania. Right, and you're calling yourself a developer because you actually have a PEA on it. This isn't an I&I. &I. Yeah, that's correct. It's uh, It has a PEA just put out in February of 2019. Uh, more importantly, we have a mining license granted to us by the state of Romania. So that gives us full exportation rights on the property. For, uh, for 20 years, right? Expect, yeah, for 20 years, renewable for five-year increments after that. So that was a, you know the major significant hurdle from the permitting side of the project. And now we're in the final stages of you know finishing off our bank with feasibility study and hopefully in the ground uh, next spring. The website for the company has an excellent presentation. I encourage everyone to go pull it down. It goes through the permitting process and um, your engagement with the community. But what really caught my eye is slide 11 of the 14, which is your sensitivity analysis to the movements in gold and copper pricing. Can you run us through that, please? Sure. You know, and, and it's an important uh, you know to understand that we're not hiding that this is not you know super high grade deposit. You know, this is running about 0.7 grams per ton gold. Uh, but it's big, you know, big and dumb makes money. You know, you can, you can move earth uh, in, inexpensively. You can make a lot of money, particularly with the simple processing uh, that we have here at this project. So, you know, we're looking at running big tons, 20,000 tons a day. Um, so bear in mind that uh, we look at porphyry projects, usually big capex. Here it's not big capex. So gold price is up 40% since our PEA. Our MPV is up 300%. You know, that's leverage. That's what you want to see. Why do you have low capex? Well, you know, we're not at 4,000 meters in the Altiplano of Chile or Peru with no water or power or, or towns around you. You're in a, you know, first world jurisdiction in Romania. You drive the site on a four lane paved highway, you know, town of 13,000 people, you know, five kilometers away. Uh, cheap power, uh, great labor force. So, you know, all the things that go into making, you know, infrastructure is important uh, for uh, porphyry projects, and it's already in place. So that makes a big difference in, in dropping that capex. So what does your IRR work out to in your PEA? Uh, so the uh, PEA IRR, uh, uh, roughly uh, 18% at 1325 gold and 310 copper. Um, but, you know, that's that was for a 12-year mine life, just on one pit. So roughly, you know, 30% of the ounces we're only touching. Uh, in the feasibility study, in fact, we're going to be bringing in the uh, secondary open pit deposit, which is Ravina. That'll take our you know target mine life probably closer to 20 years, and just on an apples to apples basis, you know the NPV goes up about 75%. So long life asset, uh, just you know big and simple. Make one product out the back end, uh, which is just a copper concentrate. So there are three pits. The PEA is only on one of the three pits, and what you just told us isn't included in the PEA. It's just an internal expectation. That's correct. Yeah, you know, there's no, there's no, uh, you know, economic study around that. That'll come out uh, towards the end of the year when the bank feasibility study will be completed. That includes Rovina sequentially to the Kolnik deposit, uh, and even that, you know, at a you know close to 20 year mine life expectation, we still haven't touched half the ounces on the project, which is Chirisata. So, you know, it. Correct. Yeah. So it's a central pit. Each of the each of the pits is only about you know you know roughly three kilometers apart. So we're not talking tens of kilometers distance between between each of the deposits. They're very close together. And the shareholders are very lucky to have a wonderful board of directors, uh, diverse skill set, uh, all well known people. It's a very it appears to be a very well managed and well governed company. Yeah, and you know, and 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 it's been you know pretty much rolled over completely. I would say in the last eighteen months. So we have been taking uh, 
a lot of uh, feedback from investors on improving governance and improving independence of boards. Uh, and in fact, I'm I'm the only uh, executive on the board as it is, and and right now everybody else is a is a is a true independent director, which is great. That falls well within the TMX guidelines, well within the policies of the exchange, um, and it also must have been popular on your bought deal financing. I think you were looking for ten million and wound up closing on twenty three. That's correct, and and you know that was uh, you know a month before you're hard pressed to find any dollars, right? So. Now, this is what happens in our business. Certainly when the cookie trade comes around, take two, because it might not come back around. Uh, and the investors were incredibly supportive. You know, we had over $17 million of institutional demand in that, in that, in that uh, 23. The balance in retail, uh, institutional demand was international in, in basis, you know, bringing in a, accounts from the United States, uh, Hong Kong, uh, Paris, and London. So, uh, you know, certainly you know, lends to the credibility of the story, you know, bringing in right now three of the largest gold funds that are out there still in the world with uh, Ruffer, Franklin Templeton and the ASA Gold Fund taking significant positions in the story. So. Nice. So symbol is ESM, trades on the TSX, roughly 170 million shares out fully diluted. And at today's stock price, you're looking at roughly a hundred million dollar market cap. Yeah, which is, you know, for a 10 million ounce deposit, you know, 10 bucks an ounce, it's pretty cheap, you know, and been finding costs are probably in the 80 to 100 dollar range. Um, you know, certainly uh, people know we're going to be building this project. Uh, we're not spending a lot of money at all uh, on expiration. We already have 10 million ounces. So, you know, I think that's just getting that story out to people to understand that uh, this is some significant catalyst coming up in the next uh, six to 12 months. Uh, and you've seen the stock go from 15 cents in March to 60 cents now, so a nice recovery, you know. So, the, uh, and, and liquidity at roughly almost two million shares a day for a, a market cap of our size is a multiple of our peers out there from a liquidity basis. So, what's the big catalyst for the stock coming up? So, I would say, you know, uh, twofold. One for sure is the bankable feasibility study, uh, which we'd expect to have uh, towards the end of the year. Uh, the second one would be our construction license, so the ability to start building the project, uh, which we would expect to have sometime uh, in the early of the, in the in the first quarter. So we should be shovel ready in the spring and starting ready to build. But the bank of feasibility study will certainly open the doors for uh, large scale financing of the project, uh, which you would need to uh, to secure prior to getting going. So, can we check in with you in a couple of months and see the progress that's being made? Absolutely. You know, we're, we're, you know, this company has been around since 2004, you know, uh, when it's been its ups and downs to try to build a mine in Brazil and kind of changed everything back in 2016. But the asset is big. The asset's real. You have a mining license. You have the support of the state government of Romania. You're in the European Union. This is not, you know, Mali or Burkina Faso or some crazy other jurisdiction. Uh, it's in the EU, you know, um, in, you know, cheap power, cheap labor. Uh, we're not on the euro. Uh, around a local currency, you know the benefits of the story are, are immense. Uh, we're probably one of the the cleanest projects out there. We don't use Sinai. We don't use wet tailings. You know this is one of the reasons why this was able to get uh, successfully permitted in the first place. Uh, so leading edge uh, environmental footprint here. It's a simple open pit with you know one one product at the back end, a copper concentrate, clean. You know that can go anywhere in in, in the global market. So I'm not going to put you on the spot and ask you where the stock will be in two months, but let's come back and we'll we'll have a look then. Eurosun Mining, uh, ESM on the Toronto Stock Exchange. Scott Moore, always a pleasure. Have a wonderful day. Thank you very much, Peter.